Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Rafara and babe, you've done this before. This is oh. your second video. And please subscribe. No! <laughs> <laughs> my name is Rafara and you're a DK. Okay, and I'm Takuda. <laughs> Yes, and please subscribe to the <laughs> video. He's so right, guys. We need those subscribers. Okay, guys. So please subscribe to the video if you're a returning subscriber. Thank you so much for coming back. If you're a new subscriber, thank you for joining us. We hope that you like what you see and you're here to stay. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't oh. miss out. Yeah, you're right, babe. So that you don't miss out on any new... That, that notification bell, right? Okay, now I have to put a notification bell there. <laughs> a notification bell so that you don't miss out on anything new. Okay, so today we're just going to be talking about how we survived a long distance marriage. Our long distance marriage. And it was like for how long, babe? Just under a year, I think. It was a year. I don't know why you're saying under a year. It was a year, guys. For me, it was a whole <laughs> year. And we've been married for almost seven years now. And it's something that I thought it was important for us to share because I received this message. I'll put it right there in my inbox. And someone was saying, you know what? I really would like to know about how you guys sort of managed a long distance marriage. So we are Zimbabweans and particularly young couples in our country um, are planning to relocate and some have already relocated. And there are different families that are living apart. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not always the case where you're able to relocate all at the same time. So they all come, they might come, if you're someone who's planning to relocate and you're thinking, okay, so we have, we are married or we've got kids, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? We just thought it important to just sort of share and our experiences so that, you know, I don't know, maybe you can get one or two things that can help you as you're making your decisions. And for us, this happened like over a year ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, more than a year ago. Yeah, so more than a year ago. Yeah, we were planning to relocate to South Africa and leave Zimbabwe. And for <laughs> us, when we started talking about this, really, I thought that we were all going to leave at the same time. I thought we were all going to get our paperwork and things were just going to work out the way that we wanted them to work out. But it so happened that we fell pregnant with our second child, right? Yeah, we fell pregnant. You fell pregnant. <laughs> People say we because it's you and I. Oh, it's God. our pregnancy. Well, there's no money sickness here, so... <laughs> anyway, see what I have to deal with? Okay, so I discovered that I was pregnant. I got pregnant all by myself. <laughs> so I discovered that I, I was pregnant and we had to sort of wait up until the baby came and we weren't sure how we were going to plan the paperwork and all that sort of stuff yeah. and he sort of had a foresight to say you know what we can't wait up until the baby comes because it looks like things are not stable in the country anymore and it looks like things are going to get bad real quick and he was like so I need to leave now and I was like you can't leave now <laughs> I'm pregnant <laughs> and I want us to all to leave at the same time. Yeah, I went. <laughs> Guys, he left. <laughs> okay, so he left and I was left at home with our um, four year old daughter and I was pregnant. So we got two kids now and I had to sort of like figure things out all by myself. And I guess for me, what I probably can just say is that if you're planning to relocate as a family or as a young couple and you have come to the decision that, okay, someone has to, to go in advance and then you say in advance, he has to lead, I don't know, to go before everyone else and then the rest of the family joins them, then either because of work, for, for school purposes or whatever it is, then it's important to know that things may not actually work out the way that you want them to. And I guess the first thing that I can say is that you need to have a plan. Yeah, you need to have a plan. So we had a plan to say, okay, so what is the plan? If you're going to leave me here in my state, what is the plan? And the plan was I was going to have the baby, get my paperwork, because my paperwork actually took longer. 
Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 I wait to wait about like nine months or so, six to nine months. I'm not. Our paperwork was almost a year apart. Yeah, it was almost a year apart in terms of you know getting all the approvals. Eleven done. months to be exact. Yeah. Eleven months. Okay, yeah. he's good with numbers. Eleven months. You heard him right. And for me, I had to like wait and make sure that I got my paperwork before I could leave. And we had to make a decision and see, so what is the plan? So I wait, I have the baby, I get my paperwork, and then I resign from my job, serve my notice, sell everything. If we want to sell whatever it is that you want to sell, and then make the move. No, well, in, in anything that you do, if you don't have a plan, you're probably going to fail. So, yeah. Yeah. doesn't so, suddenly mean the plan will, will work out the way you planned it, but then you can always ad- adjust. But at least you've got a, let's say, a North Star. Yeah, so if you so. fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. Look at some wisdom coming <laughs> out of me. Wisdom, right? Yeah. Yes. The second thing that really helped us was making sure that we were communicating. And communication is a very important part of this entire process if you're going to go through it. And I think it really did, it really played an important role. And when I mean communicate, I don't mean communicate and just calling each other prior. Remember you said you need to have a plan that that's sitting down and having that difficult conversation is part of communication. So that there are no gray areas left when someone then packs their bags and then goes. But when you're at the end of parts, you know, we have technology now. You can call each other. Yeah. Skype. We didn't, we never used Skype. We just used WhatsApp calling. Yeah. And a lot of SMSing, and. But I do admit, I was very bitter that, that, yeah. That's... Yeah, and I thought I was abandoned. I thought he had moved on. He found a new family. <laughs> no, I'm playing. But he was, um, he wasn't as consistent. I was the one who was always calling and always trying to figure out what's happening. I guess also because I had the pressure of looking after kids, and I also had school at that time. I was, yeah, yeah I was, I was doing my second degree. So imagine, I now have a a deep found appreciation for single mothers who are out there, guys. You guys are killing it. Like, you guys are killing it. I think when you're far apart, it's more important to be very precise about what's going on at uh, where you are, so that the other party really understands what's what's going on here. He was very right about that. I remember, um, like, I always wanted to know. Because I would get jealous and you'd tell me, Oh, so my friend and I went out for lunch. <laughs> they went out for breakfast. I'm like, oh, we are busy having breakfast. <laughs> we are busy having milkshakes without me and stuff like that. And it was very difficult for me. And sometimes because he's gone, he had gone to a different place. And was making friends with people that I didn't know. The different, you're spending time with people that I didn't know. I didn't know whether they were good influence on him or, or stuff like that. So different issues to do with trust came about. And I had to sort of like um, communicate. In terms of communicating, it was also important that... I think it's also important that if you're not happy or if you're struggling, you need to, to communicate with your partner and tell them, you know what, I'm not handling this well. Don't pretend like you've got it all figured out because your partner cannot guess. He's like halfway across the world, whatever it is. He's not going to guess that you had a bad day or the kids is not working out, whatever it is. So it's important to make sure that you communicate if you're happy with something and yeah. You can't, you can't say you should know. <laughs> you can't read minds, yeah? You always tell me. Oh, he oh, broke that, did you? Yeah, I did. Okay, you can fix it. So he's always saying, you know what, I, I can't read your mind, Rafaro. So you need to tell me that you are happy with something and then you work with that like that. Third point, make your partner feel special. By that, I mean, well, for me, I thought it was very important that, you know, if I had a birthday, it doesn't matter if you're in South Africa, surely you can make a phone call. <laughs> His sister bakes amazing cakes, like, Call your sister, tell her to bake me a cake and have it delivered to me, you know? I think you also missed Valentine's Day, did you know? Yeah, you missed Valentine's Day. Yeah, I missed your birthday, obviously. Your birthday? Oh, my birthday. Okay, my birthday, you were there. Mm. But Valentine's, you missed it. Yeah, yeah. Did you send me flowers? Yes. 
you see he sent me flowers and that made me feel special it was important as well because it, it sort of like made us like stay connected in a way and i should remember this one time this one one time when he sort of like did a surprise visit for me yeah i was not expecting it guys like it was so so special to me i was like so he's been thinking about me i thought he had forgotten about me <laughs> But he didn't tell me that he was uh, he was actually coming to, to Zimbabwe to see me and to see us. I don't know why I say me, me, I'm very <laughs> <laughs> so obsessed. No, but I actually remember the night before you came to visit, you were very offish. You was very offish, and I was like, okay, so what's this vibe that I'm getting? He brushed me off. He did not want to talk, and. Well, it's traveling, so I don't want you to pick up from me traveling. So. so, yeah, you know, and when I then saw him, like, walk through the door, I'm like, is this my baby? <laughs> I was so happy, though, baby. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Good so, make, practice. yeah, so make your partner feel special, do nice things, send them good morning messages, you know, check up on them during the day. Hi, baby, how's your day? If you're in, a, if you're in different parts of the world where the time zones are crazy, if someone has to make a sacrifice and wake up at 2 a.m. to make that phone call to have those, you know, to have those like you time and make sure that the intimacy stays there. Okay, and the fourth point is that when you've got kids, it's important that you guys sit down and you have a plan. So what are we going to do when we've got kids? Who's going to help me to look after the kids when you're not there? Who's going to help me with the school run, if you've got school run, homework and all those things? Don't just pack your bags and go and say, okay, my wife is superwoman, she's got it all figured out. Because particularly in our culture, it's usually the, the husband who travels to a different country or to a different town. He's the one who relocates. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's usually the husband who relocates. And then you are left with the kids all by yourself. <laughs> and I was, I was pregnant and I had a difficult pregnancy. And then when the baby came, yo, our, our baby used to cry. Mm. Like, she was just one of those, what did they call it? She still cries. Yeah, she still cries. She was very colicky. And I remember this one night, I was up alone. I think it was like for the third night in a row. And I hadn't gotten any work. I had a demanding job. And she was crying. And I just picked her up and I started crying with her. Because I was like, okay, now I don't know what to do. I am exhausted. There's no one to help me with this night shift, with this graveyard shift that I'm in. And I'm all by myself. And I actually remember it was so bad. Like our help actually came and knocked on our door. I never told you this, yeah? No. Yeah, I never told him this. She came and she knocked on her door. And she said, my man, she pay her mana. She did pay her mana. I did tell you, yeah? Mm -hmm. And that means like okay mom i can hear that things are not okay in that room can i take off and just look after the baby for you and that actually made me cry even more because i was not expecting it i mean she 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 had she, she had she had no reason to come and sort of like help me out i mean she spends the whole day with the kids whilst I, she used to spend the whole day with the kids whilst i was at work but she came up and she was like and it made a world of a difference so if you've got kids it's important that you don't just assume that your partner has it covered you need to sit down and make a plan and what i liked about you know how we sort of did it and how you did it baby was like too much my mom in love she <laughs> she used to check up on me a lot and that was a huge support system for me because i knew that monday to friday my mother is literally calling me and she's like are you guys okay you know there's a thing called posts Post what did they call post it? Natal, postnatal. I want to say postnatal depression. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thing called PND, postnatal depression, and it's a real thing. If you ever feel like you're not coping, please tell me. You know. And I had my mom in love on the other side, making sure she was calling me, and I felt the love and I felt the support. So literally every Sunday after church, I would pack my bags, get into the car, and drive to her house. If I was not having Sunday lunch today, I was having Sunday lunch and Sunday dinner there. But I'd make sure that most of my Sundays I spent it with her. And it sort of helped me, you know, during that time when I was there, either I would be taking a nap 
by the so on the couch when I was visiting her or she'd be playing with the kids or the aunties that were there would also be playing with the kids and that sort of helped in terms of making sure that I had a strong support system. Imagine if I was doing that all by myself Monday to and my job was Monday to Monday because my boss was relentless so any time was tea time he had to be ready to go and having to do that plus schoolwork and the kids was was kind of hard. I had a lot to say about this part because you're like, okay, I don't know what you're talking about. No, it's 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 because uh, my 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 experience is a little different. Also because I don't remember painful mon- moments or painful. I'm more mission oriented in everything that I do. So because of that, I'm day to day. I'm only focusing on what I'm gonna do the next day. What I'm gonna do the next day. What I'm gonna do the next day. So of course I've got my own ups and downs, I guess, but they are prof- they are very different from yours. When you've got kids, it's important that they also you know stay connected with with their with the person who's away, because I remember that when we then moved and we started staying together, you had a difficult time, yeah, with with the, with with, with Leila. Oh yeah, she'd forgotten me. That's that's fantastic. So imagine <laughs> that. The, the, I I remember my heart was broken for him, and I know his heart was broken. It's like, okay, my baby doesn't remember me, and that was because you know we had been apart for like the first year of her life. He was like traveling back and forth. He wasn't really there, and we then had to sort of start like start of having to to rebuild the relationship. Okay, I won't say we. He worked hard. To rebuild that relationship and now she's like daddy's little girl he's a girl's dad he's a girl dad do they call it girl dad it's girl dad i have no idea what that is. they call it girl dad so oh. he's a girl dad and you know he's got his princesses that look up to him and they're like you know there's our king right there and it was I, the oldest was fine because we used to have video calls and she was there and she knew that Daddy, 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 everything. Yeah. When is daddy coming home? You know, we're going to see daddy. Because kids don't understand. And if you fail to make sure that you've got a, a solid plan that makes your kids not feel too much of the difference, it, it might actually impact them negatively. So you need to make sure that you've got a plan in place for your kids as well. Yeah. And the last point is to make sure that if you are apart and if you're feeling lonely, and you're feeling like, you know what, I'm by myself here and I've got nothing to do or whatever it is, you know, get a hobby. And the thing that really saved me was because that I, I had school. So when I was not at work, I would come home and I was not with the kids, I was at school. So you can take a cooking class, you know, you can start a new hobby, get a solid routine that helps you not to feel too much of the loneliness. But I, I've always had TV, so... <laughs> okay, you was watching a lot of TV, huh? There was Netflix, TV, But it, it, it doesn't look the same because I had a lot to do during the day. Uh, I think I think my entire orientation, which made everything not so... not feel so bad, was because I had the... my entire goal was to shorten the time apart. So, yeah. And it's important to work to work towards working <laughs> towards it's important to work towards making sure that the time apart is not is not too long. You cannot just go into perpetuity or whatever and not have a goal. So I guess it goes back to like what you were saying, because he, he knew we had a goal that our family was supposed to be together by this certain time, whatever it is. So that sort of kept you busy. Yeah. Well, I was not watching TV. I was watching Game of Thrones, actually. I was watching a lot of Game of Thrones. And yeah, and just making sure that I stuck with my schoolwork. And, and that was it. So for me, I do not believe that the heart grows fonder. What, what do they say? The distance makes the heart grow fonder. No, I do not believe in that because I believe that it's very easy for couples to grow apart when they're not together and when you stop making the efforts to communicate and to plan and to make sure that you stay connected and bonded, living apart can actually hurt your marriage. That's my experience. I think the person who coined that was talking about short term uh kind of vibes yeah so when when you're apart for for a few weeks not when you're apart for years so, so it, i think it depends on the timeline 
Yeah, and for us, you know, God saved us, it was only a year, but there are people who've been apart for longer. It was like eight months. <laughs> it was a year. You left on the 1st of July. And, and I, then and then I came back in March, at the end of March. And then we you left again. For only two weeks. And then you were following. No, it wasn't week. for two weeks. Was if you left in March, when, mm. when did you? Did you not leave in March? I left, no, no. I left in July, right? Came back in March, then left on the fifteenth of May. Okay, and then and I you came and on the first of, of June. June. <laughs> yeah, so. No, it was a year, guys. And don't it listen to him. Year. Don't listen to him. Okay, for me, it really felt like an entire year because, and besides, the time that he came in my mind was not like, oh, my husband is here. In my in my mind, I was always thinking he's leaving soon. So I, was, I didn't have that sense of comfort that I have now to say my family is in one place. I was like, oh, okay, so he's leaving again. And, yeah. But I left for two weeks and then you came. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's it. So make yeah. sure that you've got a plan. You need to make sure that you communicate. And you need to make sure that you've got a, a, a solid plan as well for your kids and how you're going to interact and do all those things. And make sure that you plan properly, have your finances ready in place, and there's no one that is left feeling abandoned because it's so easy to feel like, okay, so I'm I'm all I'm all here by myself. And I guess yeah, that's it. So let us know if you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell. <laughs> Yes, at home. And hit the <laughs> notification bell. You got it right, baby. Hit the notification bell. Like and share this video with anyone who, who you think might actually benefit from this. And yeah, I guess that's it. So bye, guys.